you know, one of the things that we've learned along the way is unless you plan for these things, unless you have a, a vision about where you want to end up, it's not going to happen. And it's, there is a cost in all of this, and so you've not only got to plan for doing it, you've, you've got to make allowances in, in your budget to do it. Anyone starting out today is, is in a far better position than we were, and the place to start is by having a, a farm map and a farm plan which identifies the high risk areas, the areas that are, um, are, are causing the most environmental impact. Well, we started off with uh, doing the Covenant, which was up the top end here, which is um, which my mother and father uh, covenanted in the early 1970s. This, on, this part of the farm is the steeper part of the farm and the house is sitting just down in here. And, um, and it was the area that was most exposed to erosion in the early 70s when we were getting heavy rainfall events. And that was the area that we got in tow with the Waikato Valley Authority. Uh, did quite a lot of pole planting. We planted about 1,100 poles through that area there and down into here. And we fenced off these patches of bush um, that are at the top ends of the gullies. And we learned a lot from that. We learned what, how not to fence. And, uh, but we also learned how quickly those little remnant patches of bush that, which were badly degraded, regenerated when, once you retired this, this stock out of them. If you're going to do this sort of stuff, uh, you need to focus on the co-benefits or the, the commercial gains that you might make out of doing it. And so, for example, uh, planting poplar poles and, and uh, willow poles and gullies provide shade and shelter as well as um, you know, slowing down the erosion or preventing erosion. And of course, some people will say that they provide stock food, but mainly in this sort of country, um, uh, it's a benefit of the shade and, and it is quite windy, so they provide shelter as well. Um, the second thing is that some of that steep stuff uh, is unprofitable to farm anyway. And retiring it, and particularly where we've planted our forestry, uh, we've actually uh, had uh, improved the profitability of the farm by retiring that land and got the uh, added benefits of shelter and, um, and improved efficiency in terms of stock movement and mustering and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, and, and pasture utilisation has improved immensely with the redesign of the property because not only have we fenced off and retired those unproductive areas, we've um, We've got more paddocks, we've put in uh, water supplies, uh, which um, um, you know, give stock, uh, the, or allow stock the ability to graze on the hilltops, which they weren't grazing uh, efficiently before. And, um, and the stock movement around the farm is a lot easier, and it's a lot more pleasant to farm, property to farm. Yeah, there are animal health benefits in terms of um, having a reticulated water supply. Part of our uh, supply contract with Whole Foods is that we have to clean our wood troughs every year, so, so we go around and clean them. So our water quality is always uh, good and, um, and it overcomes some of the problems you get with, with natural water where you can get Campylobacter and, and that sort of thing, which um, we've had problems with here and the causes of abortions and sheep and that sort of thing. So, so there's real benefits in, in having a reticulated system throughout the farm, albeit that it's expensive, but the economic returns are there. And uh, there was an old duck pond in the, in the base of that gully and we've calculated that that duck pond uh, would have held 300 cubic metres of water or, and it's now filled up with sediment. And so over a 30 year period, that duck pond filled up with 300 tonnes of or cubic metres, whatever you like to say, of sediment, which if it wasn't there, would have been eroding out of that catchment down into the main stream. Um, we've fenced it off and retired that area, and of course there's very little sediment coming out of it at all. And we've also retired or fenced off a, a batter or bank above the track uh, here, which was eroding in during um, wet weather and during the hot summer straight into the water table and down into the main stream. More recently we've done quite a bit of work in terms of fencing off um, wet and sensitive areas along the stream and just running sheep in them uh, and, and not allowing cattle into those areas. So this area is a sheep only area. 
This area here is a sheep only area. The sheep graze this under two wires from the adjacent paddocks. For anyone who wants to get started, they can go through to an LEP course and uh, develop a farm plan and which sets out priorities, uh, sets out areas that are of environmental concern and, um, and go from there.